Hello, I'm Dr. Kenneth Candido from Chicago, and today we're going to be discussing pulse radio frequency and injection techniques of the dorsal root ganglion in the cervical spine, both at C2 as well as the inferior levels C3 through C8. For demonstration purposes, since I'm not using a live model today, I will be demonstrating the C4 dorsal root ganglion nerve procedure uh, exiting the uh, intervertebral foramina at C3, C4 levels. And to do so, I'm using an anatomical model here. This is a, a procedure again in the head and neck where there's the possibility of trespass into the vertebral artery. So for every patient, there must be a free flowing intravenous line in place. Sedation is not obligatory and in my own unique personal practice, I do not employ the use of sedation for this purpose. It's critically important that the patient remain immobile and the technique may be performed with the patient in the supine position or the po uh, prone for the posterior approach or the lateral approach. For this purpose today, with my cadaver specimen, I will have the specimen in the lateral decubitus position. And of course, bolsters are used to support the body and prevent movement. Essentially, the goal is to perform a, an injection in, this, in the cephalad and posterior part of the neural frame, and much, much as one might do if they were doing a selective nerve root block. And if we're gonna be performing pulsed radio frequency neurotomy or neurotomy using continual energy with heat uh, liberation, what we would use, of course, is sensory and motor stimulation. Uh, sensory stimulation is exclusively important for the, the nerve at C2 because there is no significant motor component. But from C3 to C8, we would per be performing both sensory as well as motor stimulation to assure that we were in the appropriate location anatomically and not engendering movement of the shoulder or the upper extremity on the ipsilateral side. What I do is I take a scalp film of the cervical and cervical thoracic junction with the fluoroscopy now oriented laterally because the patient, of course, is in the lateral decubitus position. And I utilize magnification times one, sometimes times two, to open up the neural foramen as I flatten the end plates of the uh, targeted level. After performing a sterile skin prep and drape of the site in question, I anesthetize the area using 1% lidocaine using a 27 gauge 1.5 inch needle. And once I've done that, remembering that my goal is to be in the cephalad dorsal part of the neural foramen here and taking great consideration of the vertebral artery which is housed in the foramen transversarium and assuring that we do not trespass on that structure. So once I've anesthetized the skin, I'll take, and I've taken my scalp film picture please. I will be advancing my needle towards the neural foramen. Picture. Here I'm a little too posterior still. I'm going to be moving slightly anteriorly. With the goal, of course, to place the needle, picture please, into the cephalad and dorsal part of the neural foramen. I'm always assessing the patient verbally, picture please. And you can see, actually, picture. Take that picture right there, sir. That's actually exactly where I would like to be. I'm in the cephalad, come closer. Cephalad and dorsal part of the neural foramen. May I please have a, what's really a, a posterior anterior view now, please, if you don't mind. Now, before I perform sensory and motor stimulation, I'm gonna be sure that I'm in the middle third of the facet joint using this view and this orientation. That's the appropriate anatomical location. See that I'm in the cephalad and lateral part of the canal. Picture, please picture okay pictures are taken can you come to the screen sir and now you can see that I'm in the central portion of the facet joint about the middle third of the facet joint for this C4 dorsal root ganglion injection complications can occur most notably injection into one of the arterial structures but if we take great precautions and we utilize our appreciation of anatomy and stay away from the foramen transversarium Venous injection, for example, is of little to no consequence, but of course, arterial injection can have significant morbidity and sometimes mortality. That is dorsal root ganglion injection in the cervical spine. Thank you for your time and attention.